Again, welcome to Principles of Epidemiology. In these lectures, we're going to learn about the measure of disease. This is our lecture number two, part one. So our today's learning objective is to define what is a population. We have a fixed and also dynamic populations. We are also going to define and explain the differences between ratio, proportion, and weight. And also we're going to explain what is meant by the term at risk. So what are the four components for measuring disease frequency? One will be the population, very important. The population will be the group of people. We may have different population with different characteristics. Example, population can be college students between the age of 20 to 32, or another population will be workers working in a rest, um, restaurant or maybe in a nuclear power station within some age group or without the age group. So we may have different characteristics of population. Secondly, cases of disease normally will be the numerator and the size of population will be the denominator. Example, we can find the prevalence of a case uh, or, or of a disease, which means we divide the cases of the disease, the total cases by the total population. We can also find the incidence of a case, which would be normally the new cases. So the new cases will be based on the time. For example, we may say, okay, if a case happened within two days, we classify it as a new case. Over two days, we classify it as an old case. So that's why time also is very important. We have to be very explicit by the time. And normally we use the prevalence and incidence to measure if there's outbreak or there's no outbreak, or also to know how fast the disease is spreading. So first we start with the population, which we say is the group of people. So normally population that we use as a base group from which we count disease frequency. We have two types. The most common usage will be the group of people living in a specific geographical area. Now, epidemiologic usage will be group of people with a common characteristic. Now, example of a source populations. Now, a population can be any characteristics or any common characteristics. For example, we may have a population that are residents near a hazardous waste site, or workers at a nuclear power plant, or diners at a restaurant, or patients who use cardiology clinic at BMC. And the type of population, as we said earlier, we have two types. One is the face, and the other is dynamic. Normally, face population, uh, the size doesn't change. So a population whose membership is defined on the basis of some event. So membership is permanent. Example would be the veterans of Vietnam War or people born in 1982 or people enrolled in a study. So again, its face is permanent, no change. A population whose membership is defined on the basis of some events. Membership is always permanent. If you have Venter of a, a war, or in this case, Vietnam War, it, you always will be a venter of a Vietnam War. It won't change. Or if you were born in 1982, it cannot be changed. Or if you enroll in a studies, and then it's done. And a dynamic will be a population whose membership is defined by being in a state or condition. So the membership is transient, it can change. For example, residents of Boston, I may move from Boston in a few years or a few days. Parents of a teenager, graduate students. So here, the main keyword between face and dynamic, membership is transit in dynamic and membership is permanent in face population. So why distinguish? Here we say informs which measures of disease frequency and which study design are suitable. So based on the type of population, we may choose a specific study design. So dynamic is a transit 
membership, as we said earlier, and the face means permanent membership. That's the major difference between population, face, and dermavid. The next will be the cases of diseases. So we say the cases of disease is normally equal to the num numerator of all the measures of frequency. So disease can be any health outcome. For example, can be infectious, uh, infection, cancer, injury, defect, etc. So a disease will be any health outcome. Now the method of disease ascertainment include clinical records or diagnostic tests, disease registries, surveillance programs, and also self-reports. But most common, commonly this may happen in a, a medical office, in a clinic or hospital, for example, clinical records, diagnostic tests. Now, quality data on cases is a key. So we don't need a bias in our data set uh, with diseases. So what will be a good case definition for the following disease? We have a asthma, attention deficit disorder, and also HIV infection. So again, size of a population will be the denominator. And here we say the size of population will be the denominator for all measures. And then also the size is based on the population that you identify, whether it's, it's the full size or it's just a sample of the population. A sample means the subset of the population. For example, population will be 1 million and a sample can be only 100 or 1,000 or necessary for comparison of disease across populations. So cannot compare number of cases alone. The importance of size of a population, again, information from national, this information from the National Ski Areas Association. And the data given here is based on the fatalities, drain ski and snowboarding versus other activities over a two year time period. So again, this data from National Ski Areas Association. Yeah, we have, we said the ski and snowboarding is 38 fatalities. Now to place ski and snowboarding safety into contents, it helps to again, offer the perspective of fatalities during other activities. So what we're trying to do here again, compare the ski and snowboarding with other activities and see if the, which one have more fatalities. So here by comparing, we can even say that the ski and snowboarding is more safe than falls in bathtubs. We have more fatalities within two years period. And bicycle riding, almost now under within two years period. Even walking, 6,162 and motor vehicle accidents, 39,000 within two years. This is again US population, which approximately 300 million during this period. So importance of this, one of the importance of size of the, again, a population. Now last will be our time. And here they say we should be very explicit because time is necessary for all measures of disease frequency. As we said earlier, prevalence measurement may be different from incidence because of the time of the disease. So disease occurrence can be measured at a single point in time. That will be the prevalence at steady enrollment at birth or at a particular date. When we measure a disease occurrence, at a single point in time, that's where we find the prevalence of the disease. Now, disease occurrence can be measured over an interval of time. For example, a period of a follow-up or from birth to 10 years of age while living in the city of Boston. Now, measuring disease frequency, we have three generic types of measures. Uh, the first would be the ratio, 
ratio means division of one number by another number do not will need to be related. So I'm dividing two items, the numerator by the denominator, but they don't have to be related. So example given here, ratio will be the observed number of A's cases in country A during June divided by the expected number of AIDS cases in country A during June. So we have 40 cases observed and 20 cases expected. So which means we have almost two to one double. So the ratio of observed cases to expected is 40 by 20, which will be two to one or two. And this is not good because we are expecting lesser than what we observe. There were two times as many ACE cases in country A during you than what was expected. So the next will be the proportion. Proportion will be a division of two related numbers. So ratio, the division of two numbers, they are not related. Proportion, they have to be related always. That's why we say a proportion is more or less like a prevalence. The relation here is that they are all population. They are all, let's say they are all students or they are all patients or they all live in one geographical area. So we divide those who have the problem by the whole total people. So division of two related numbers is proportion. Numbers must be related. The numerator is a subject or subset of the denominator, often expressed as a percentage. So example will be from June to August, we have 1,000 broad samples were collected among intensive care patients at BUMC, 120 of them were positive for HIV. So the number of samples is 1,000, positive is 120. So here we can see that the 120 is subset of the total sample. So this is the proportion because the division of the two numbers, divide 120 by 1,000, the numbers are related because the number of samples is 1,000. Inside that 1,000, 120 of them tested positive. And the rest, in this case, will be 880 tested negative. So we can divide S by N, which will give us 120. Those who tested positive divided by the total sample. And that will give us 12% or 0.12. And actually, this value is the same as the prevalence if the population is 1,000 and the number of cases in the population is 120, then we have the prevalence. So here we say 12% of intensive care patients were infected with HIV. Next will be the rates. So rates also will be a division of one number by another number in which time is intrinsic part of the denominator, most frequently misunderstood parameter. So ratio, you divide two numbers, they are not related. Proportion, divide two, division of two numbers that are related, but with rate, division of one number by another in which a time is very important. So intrinsic part of the denominator will be time. So now let's see an example. Here we see a breast cancer, which is an incidence rate, which means the breast cancer is a new case. Is the number of new cases of breast cancer among 100,000 women over one year period. So we can see the key. So this is a rate because there's a time period. So 125 cases, divided by 100,000 women per year. 
125 cases by 100,000 women years. So that will be the conclusion of our lecture part two. And again, in these lectures, we went through how to measure diseases. And here we discussed the four components that we need to consider for measuring. Example can be, again, as we said earlier, the population, the cases of disease, the size of population, and the time. And the three things we discussed here is the ratio, proportion, and rate. And these are some of the calculations we can use to measure again diseases. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.